In July 2020, construction began on a project to build 135 residential units. The principal contractor engaged a subcontracted crane provider to install and commission a 14-tonne tower crane on the site. On 20 August 2020, bundles of 6-metre steel reinforcement bars were delivered to the site. Approximately four days later, on 24 August, a truck-mounted concrete placing boom arrived at the site around 7am and was parked in an L-shaped area of a laneway approximately two metres from a building under construction. On the same morning, three form workers employed by a subcontractor were directed to continue working on the construction of a wall system in the laneway by their site foreman. A subcontracted dogman and crane operator were instructed by the principal contractor's site supervisor to move the load of steel bars, weighing between two and four tonnes, from the ground level to an elevated deck, approximately two metres above the ground. The dogman hooked up the load and communicated with the crane operator via radio to commence the lift. They did not see anyone in the laneway at the time. The crane operator lifted and travelled the load forward at a walking pace. The dogman kept one hand on the load to avoid scratching the concrete truck behind. Around 7.30am, one of the form workers was standing in front of the formwork deck of the second building. Upon spotting him, the dogman shouted a warning for him to get out of the way. The crane operator lost control of the load and it swung in a pendulum motion, striking the form worker, lifting him off the ground and pinning him against the adjacent formwork. He was suspended there between 10 to 60 seconds until nearby workers were able to free him. The safety officer of the principal contractor called for an ambulance. However, as the worker showed no visible signs of injury, the site supervisor concluded that he had not been seriously injured and cancelled the ambulance. As the injured worker began experiencing pain and having trouble breathing, he was moved to the site's first aid shed. A second ambulance was called around 9am, arriving approximately 25 minutes later. Despite the incident, the site supervisor directed work to continue, including crane lifts, concrete pumping and formwork activities. The formwork deck where the incident occurred was rebuilt. The worker was seriously injured in the incident and spent six days in hospital. SafeWork New South Wales was notified of the incident by the safety manager shortly after 11am, over three and a half hours after the incident occurred. In this incident, workers were put at risk of suffering serious injury or death as a result of being struck, crushed or otherwise coming into contact with objects being moved by the crane. Unfortunately, at the time of the incident, there was no exclusion zone in place around the crane that was marked out with physical barriers or markings. Additionally, workers had not been notified of crane operations in their work area. The principal contractor failed to implement and enforce safety systems which could have mitigated these hazards effectively. It is crucial that information, training and instructions are provided to all workers and that they are communicated in a way that can be easily understood. For example, when language barriers exist, steps must be taken to ensure that they understand, such as using a translator or providing translated resources. The language you speak should never be a barrier to your safety. Serious injuries or illness, death or dangerous incidents are considered a notifiable incident and you must report it to Safe Work New South Wales immediately after becoming aware on 13 10 50 as an urgent investigation may be needed. The severity of the form workers' injuries in this scenario meant that this was a notifiable incident which should have been reported to Safe Work New South Wales immediately. Work at the incident site should have ceased to preserve the scene until a Safe Work New South Wales inspector could attend the site or give direction. Your responsibility to not disturb the incident scene does not prevent any action to provide first aid, 
make the site safe, remove a deceased person, assist with the police investigation if directed, and comply with an inspector request. If a notifiable incident occurs on your site, you must also record it in your register of injuries and notify your insurer within 48 hours. Significant penalties apply if you fail to notify us of an incident. The maximum penalty for failing to notify exceed $65,000 for a body corporate and $10,000 for an individual. This video was produced by the offender as part of a district court order to raise awareness of work health and safety. It was developed in consultation with SafeWork New South Wales.